Hi, I'm Fed and I'm learning to make stuff by watching tons and tons of videos. In today's tool corner, I'll be talking about this very cool mini spot welder from Electrix. Hi, I'm Fed. Ouch. In today's video, I'll quickly explain what a spot welder is. I'll talk about the pros and cons of the Electrix mini spot welder. I'll show you its parts up close and then I'll show you the welder in action. And as always, you'll find links to my research videos and websites in the description below. So real quick, what's a spot welder? Well, a spot welder is a device that generates an enormous current of electricity through a very concentrated area between two pieces of metal, melting them together or forming a weld. They're used a lot in manufacturing. A mini spot welder is, well, I want to say a small or mini spot welder. Yeah, it's just a, a small spot welder that is more appropriate for like a little workshop or a home or apartment than a factory. In particular, mini spot welders are used primarily to do one thing, which is to weld thin pieces of nickel to rechargeable batteries to build battery packs. That's what I got mine for. There are lots of mini spot welders out there and while there are a few that are plug-in versions, almost all of them use batteries because of the high current needs of the mini spot welder. After doing lots of research and looking at a bunch of different mini spot welders, I chose this one from Electrix. Here are the reasons why I chose it. First, I value my life and my well-being. You see, a couple of years ago, there was a little red mini spot welder that everyone was buying and making videos about. It was really popular, super cheap, and extremely dangerous. To make it safe-ish, you had to know a lot about electronics and modify it. The people at Electrix also value their lives, apparently, because they use really heavy-duty hardware and safety features in their mini spot welder, which is why I picked it. I'm going to talk more about those features later. The second reason why I picked it is because the Melectrix Mini Spot Welder is very well designed. It uses an Arduino to control the welding pulses, and it has a really clear and easy to read interface. All the other budget Mini Spot Welders that I've seen have cryptic controls and very little in the way of information on how to use them. And finally, Melectrix is continuously improving their Mini Spot Welder. I have version 3 of the spot welder, but there's already a version 4 out. The designers keep on improving the mini spot welder in terms of hardware, electronics, and software. Plus, and this is just kind of an extra thing, Melectrix sells spare parts for their welders so you can repair a welder if it breaks. And they provide free of charge PCB files, parts lists, Arduino source code, for it all so that you can build your own from scratch if you want to. Of course, this mini spot welder is not perfect. First of all, it's, it's a little clunky to use. Because the fuse and the welder itself are in different cases, it's a little ungainly to use. It kind of like bunches up with cables and everything. It's a small quibble, I know, but it's something that I noticed right away the first time that I put my spot welder together and tried using it. However, as I mentioned, I have version three of the spot welder. Version four puts all the components into one case, which takes care of the clunkiness that I experienced. And while I was working on the script for this video, I came across this. It's a 3D printable case for version three of the mini spot welder, which puts everything into one box. I'm gonna try it out later. And speaking of 3D printing, the 3D printed parts that came with the kit aren't great. When you buy the mini spot welder in a kit, it comes with all the parts you need, including a 3D printed case. The one that I got looked like it had been printed really quickly on a poorly maintained 3D printer. The layer lines are prominent and the parts don't fit well together. Compare the original parts to the ones I just printed and you'll see what I'm talking about. That said, it's, it's not a big deal. The parts still work, they're still functional, but they do take away from the otherwise excellent design and execution of the mini spot welder. So I thought I'd mention it. 
There's one more thing I wanted to mention. It's not a negative, but it's something that I wanted you to be aware of. And that's the price of the mini spot welder. It's around 120 or 125 euros, which doesn't include shipping. And you have to buy either a car battery or a lithium polymer battery and a charger to get it to work properly. Now, I think that's a very fair price for safety and quality, but there are other mini spot welders out there which cost less. For example, you can still find one of those red mini spot welders for around $25, but I wouldn't do that unless you really know what you're doing and you're willing to modify it. There's also a new model of mini spot welder available, which comes with a built-in battery, so you don't have to buy that separately. They cost around $50 to $75, depending on the model. They're meant for light welding. While they don't have the power or the safety features of the Molectrics, they might be okay for someone that just needs to do a couple welds. Okay, let's talk about the welder parts, then I'll do a little demonstration. Molectrix sells two models of spot welders. They're both identical, but come with slightly different connection hardware for either a car battery or a lithium polymer battery. Those kinds of batteries can handle the very high discharge amperage you need to create a weld. I don't mean to brag, but the reason that I bought the model that hooks up to a lithium polymer battery is because as an OG nerd, I already had a lithium polymer battery charger. So yeah, I guess I'm cool. This is an Arduino microcontroller. It manages the current going from the battery to the welding leads. A five to 10 millisecond pulse at around 600 amps turns nickel strips molten, making them stick to the batteries you're welding. It has a very easy to use interface and even lets you do things like flip the orientation of the LCD display. Here's the end that connects to my LiPo battery. It's called an XT90 connector with really beefy cables. It's a standard connector for high capacity batteries and it's used a lot in radio controlled modeling. The battery is connected to the electronics of the welder via these two blocks of aluminum. They're essentially giant, super thick wires that won't melt while you're welding and that also act like giant heat sinks to keep the electronics cool. And these are called MOSFET transistors. They're solid state switches that can handle hundreds of amps. They sit between the battery and aluminum blocks and the welding leads. The Arduino turns the MOSFETs on for a tiny fraction of a second and then turns them off. This is the 300 amp fuse, an important safety feature that- Hold I up, didn't I say that 600 amps of current flow through the system during a weld? Then why doesn't the 300 amp fuse blow? Am I a stupid, dumb, lying liar that lies through his lying teeth all the time? No, I'm not a liar. Welding doesn't cause the fuse to blow because the current pulse is so brief. If there was a failure in the system that caused the battery to short, like a fried MOSFET, the fuse would blow. Without the fuse, the LiPo battery could explode and cause a fire. The new spot welders with built-in batteries don't have fuses like this, which is why I'm wary of them. I put some links in the description if you want to learn more about the care and maintenance of lithium polymer batteries. There's also a small fan that keeps the parts cold, two welding leads, and a foot pedal to activate the welder when in manual mode. So let me show you the mini spot welder in action. I bought it to build battery packs for my projects, but also to repair electronics, like a Bluetooth speaker that I have that has a battery that no longer holds a charge. I did a few test welds to get used to the welder. Like many welders, this welder has two modes, auto and manual. In auto mode, when the welding leads touch the same nickel strip, the welder releases a pulse after a short delay. In manual mode, you activate the pulse using the foot pedal. I used manual mode because I didn't trust myself to not accidentally touch the welding leads together. It took me a little practice to know how long of a pulse I should use and how to use the foot pedal. Once I got the hang of it, I welded two nickel strips to a new 18650 battery and replaced the old one in the Bluetooth speaker. And that's it. That's my review of the Melectrix Mini Spot Welder. Do I recommend it? I definitely do. I think it's very safe, very well designed, and well supported. Keep in mind though that it 
might be overkill for someone that just needs to do one or two welds. But if you're into building battery packs for solar projects or a DIY electric bike, I think this is a really good mini spot welder to get. Okay, see ya, bye. Fed and I'm learning to mix, <clears throat> no. Um, I don't mean to brag. I'm going to quickly explain what, sp I don't, um, I don't mean to brag, but the reason that I bought the model, uh, so yeah, pretty cool.